Now at 6, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good evening and thanks for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 6. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Bridget Bjorlo. The summer heat continues. Another hot day here in Connecticut. We are taking a live look now outside the capital city. Yeah, Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frame joining us now with how long this heat will last. And Rach, uh, it's going to be a while, right? Yeah, we got to settle into these very humid, almost Florida conditions. Although we are here at the hottest point of the year in Connecticut. So it kind of makes sense that we are dealing with it right now. But every day will be very warm. Every day will be very humid, and each day there will be a chance for a pop-up shower or storm in spots, but a lot of the day will be dry. 85 in New Haven, 88 right now in Hartford, but here's a look at the feels like temperature, and it's up close to triple digits right now for Windsor Locks and more areas. We're seeing that about an hour or two ago. Groton, congrats to you for being the comfiest <laughs> spot in the state. 75 degrees there, 86 currently in Meriden. A heat advisory remains in effect until until this time tomorrow night because once again tomorrow it'll feel like between 95 to near triple digits so whatever you've been doing to stay cool you're going to keep wanting to do that over and over again radar showing some showers and some storms that have fired up here in Litchfield and also northwestern Hartford County most of the state will stay dry tonight but checking out a lot of lightning here in Salisbury moving into Norfolk before that passes into Massachusetts so we'll be watching this in a few towns tonight. Overall, though, the main story is it's warm, it's humid, overnight lows stay in the 70s, and then we do today all over again. Early fog clouds break for some sun, and it is a warm, hot, hazy, humid afternoon. We'll talk more about when we can see a better chance for storms later this week coming up. All right, Rachel, thank you very much. It's the hot topic in Connecticut once again today, the major heat that's spreading across our state. Yeah, as you just heard, temperatures and humidity levels will soar again today, causing the extreme hot weather protocol to be activated. Fox 61's Brooke Griffin is at a Fairhaven splash pad with a look at what that means right now. Yeah, those splash pads like the ones here at Dover Beach are now going to be open across the state for extended hours today. Now, the good news is this is something that's happening today and tomorrow. These are available to everyone to make sure that you can keep the kids out of the house and staying busy, but also staying cool and safe as well. As Connecticut sees tropical conditions yet again this week, state and local leaders want to make sure that people have options when it comes to staying cool. These options include more than 100 cooling centers opening today and tomorrow. These are at many local libraries, town hall buildings and more. Many of those centers will be open for people to get cold water and enjoy air conditioning from early morning to late evening, but each of them have different hours, so just check online before you go. Splash pads, pools and beaches in many cities are also on extended hours. Spots like this one here in Fairhaven open all day for kids to be outside while still staying safe. The full list and more information can be found on fox61.com. Now, if you don't have access to the internet, don't worry, you can still find a location near you. You can do so by calling 211. You can also visit the 211 Connecticut website. Whatever works for you, they have a full list of all of those sites for use for today and tomorrow. And paramedics are just reminding people that if you do start to feel those exhaustion symptoms, maybe you're nauseous or a little bit dizzy, do not try to go ahead and go to a cooling center. Go ahead and call 911 instead. In Fairhaven, Brooker Finn, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Brooke, thank you. We have an alert for you. If you're going to be out on the roads tonight, we are monitoring a tractor trailer crash reported on Route 8 South at exit 33 in Waterbury. Troopers were dispatched. Injuries have been reported. Now, we don't yet know the extent of those injuries or what led to the crash, but we will bring you more information as soon as we get it. Well, for months now, the Waterbury School Board has been pushing to extend the school superintendent's contract by three years. And now the mayor says both he and the board have decided to move on, asking Dr. Verna Ruffin to clear out her office by the end of this week. Fox 61's Julia LeBlanc is live outside Waterbury City Hall with the details. Julia. Hi, good evening to you, Brent. Yeah, Mayor Paul Pernaruski Jr. here in Waterbury tells us this was really a collective and last straw decision between him and the school board after he says they learned that the district is now being investigated for the second time by the Department of Justice. 
This all follows months of back and forth between the mayor, the school board, the teachers union and the superintendent about whether or not to extend Dr. Verna Ruffin's contract. Ultimately, the mayor was against extending it for a long period of time due to what he says were communication issues and an overall sense that teachers in the district were not happy with the way things were being run. That came out in a recent survey of more than 700 Waterbury teachers, which the president of the union says was damning. We brought some of these concerns to the board, to the superintendent first, uh, then the board, and we just felt like the superintendent was not addressing many of our concerns in a timely fashion. Then came a Department of Justice investigation into the district's treatment of special needs students, which the mayor says Dr. Ruffin failed to inform the city and the school board about. Now, as Dr. Ruffin's contract was coming to a close, the mayor says he learned of a second investigation. This time, the Office of the Child Advocate and Disability Rights Connecticut were referring Waterbury and three other municipalities to the DOJ for civil rights violations for special education students. The Mayor says he learned the city was notified two years ago and never took action. That's it. I just saw that was sort of the end of the road for me. I just didn't see any way to go forward. I think it's time for a new start. The mayor vetoed the decision to extend Dr. Ruffin's contract, and the school board did not hold a meeting to override it to try to keep Dr. Ruffin. From here, the board will have to select an interim superintendent, and the district will start a national search through an outside consulting firm for a permanent replacement. The mayor says that process could take 10 months to a year. Education is critically important. We face a lot of problems in Waterbury, and I think when you start looking at the poverty and the crime and the other issues, if we don't solve the education process, we're never going to solve all of those other problems. We're going to start with a clean slate, which is really the best position. I couldn't imagine, even with another one-year contract with Dr. Ruffin in place, how that would go, because there were so many questions, and those types of questions don't get answered in a year. Now, we did reach out to Dr. Ruffin via text and email, and we did not hear back. We also haven't heard back from the president and vice president of the school board. However, we are hearing from one of their commissioners tonight, Thomas Van Stone, who tells us he believes this decision here is long overdue. We're live in Waterbury tonight. Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Julia, thank you. Turning now to an update from an animal cruelty case in Naugatuck. The owner of Black Rock Kennel will be spending the next close to three years in prison. David Rivera pleading guilty to the crimes against him. You see him there. Police say at least 10 dogs were shot and killed by employees at the kennel back in May. He also had illegal firearms and explosives on site, police say. Rivera was given 364 days in prison for reckless endangerment and then five years for animal cruelty cruelty. After Rivera serves two years for the animal cruelty charge, he will be placed on three years probation. A woman in Hamden had to be rescued after she was hit by a car and ended up stuck under it. It happened on Brooksvale Avenue around 8 this morning. That woman was treated on scene and then sent to the hospital with serious injuries. An investigation into what led up to the crash is underway now. Turning out to Bristol, where two firefighters were injured while battling a house fire. The fire ignited on Summer Street yesterday afternoon. Multiple departments were needed to fight the fire, and the flames were knocked down quickly. The injuries to the two firefighters were minor, and they are expected to be okay. Turning on some sports news, Dan Hurley has a brand new contract that will keep him in stores for the next season and beyond. Yeah, the National Coach of the Year spoke on the UConn campus today for the first time since receiving this new deal. Fox 61 Sports Director Jonah Karp was in stores today and joins us now with more. Jonah? Hey, Brandon, the last hour I talked about how Dan Hurley reached this point, his journey from a high school coach teaching history class about 15 years ago or so to a two-time national champion and one of the highest paid coaches in the sport. Hurley uses the word obsession when describing his love and his passion for basketball, and he thrives in an environment where he's surrounded by people with that same passion. So it shouldn't be overlooked that the entire coaching staff around Hurley isn't just returning, each assistant and coach received a new contract as well. So that culture that's worked for Coach Hurley and has led to two national titles isn't going anywhere. Well, I'm just so careful about who I hire. I, I, and I always have been, so um, you gotta, I think we share the same obsession uh, with our work. 
Yeah, um, you know, particularly with Luke and Kamani, I think we're, we're all, uh, we all obsess. I work really well with, with staff members that obsess over their job the way I do, so mm -hmm. that's a great starting point. Um, I, I would say with Luke and Kamani, they're, they're not, they're not, it's not any areas where, where they're weak, like they can recruit and, uh, you know, they, they can help develop player skills and then they're tactically, they're real sound coaches. Luke Murray and Kamani Young each received a new three-year contract and assistant coach Tom Moore signed a one-year deal. So while the roster will look very different than last year, all the coaches that led to the Huskies to back-to-back -back titles are returning for a chance at three in a row. We'll have more on Coach Hurley's new contract coming your way later in the show. Brent, Bridget.